It's the first day of school. We'll meet a pair of mothers and daughters who are having a pretty amazing first day. Plus, we'll hear from the superintendent on his goals for the year. Tara Cox has an update on the latest Bond project, and Chad Young will show us how kids were learning science this summer. Let's go inside Vancouver Public Schools. everybody, I'm Nick Vol. Welcome to the show and welcome back to school. It's one of the most exciting days of the year and we have so much stuff for you, but here's what you really came to see, cute videos of kids. Out front at Sarah J. Anderson Elementary this morning, parents were grabbing those last minute drop off pictures of their kids for Facebook and school staff at Anderson provided those fun frames. Of course, managing a crowd like you always see on the first day of school can't be easy with all the parents and grandparents dropping off students. So kudos to school staffers across the district who managed it all with a smile. And let's see some more cuteness in our top three. These are our favorite social media posts. Number three comes from a parent and student at Truman Elementary School. This fourth grader is, as the hashtag indicates, a self-manager who takes care of herself in the classroom. Note the other hashtag, VPS Back to School. Use it on your social media post today to show off how your child went back to class. Our number two is a good reminder from reporter Evan Bell of KATU Television. He reminds us that police in Portland and of course here in Vancouver are out there looking for speeders in school districts. It's 20 miles an hour when kids are present, so be sure to slow down. Not just because you might get a ticket, but also to keep those kids safe. And our number one comes from Sarah, who posted photos of her sons as they headed off to 8th grade at Alki Middle School. Note, she used the hashtag VPS Back to School, you should do it too. These guys are dressed to party and to learn, of course. This photo made me laugh when I saw it. I love the rabbit ears, and I hope it did the same for you. Thank you, Sarah, for sharing. The first day of school is always full of nervous and excited kids stepping into a new classroom. And for first year teachers, the feeling is mutual. At Anderson Elementary, we met a teacher who is starting a career by following in some pretty impressive footsteps. Amanda Richter has her story. In 1991, Teresa David began her career as a teacher at Sarah J. Anderson Elementary. 28 years old at the time of the photo. So I was hired the weekend before school started and I was still waiting tables. My other job that I had all through college too, so I had to work I had to wait tables all weekend and set a classroom up in like two days. Despite the stressful start, Teresa found success in the classroom and in her personal life. By the end of my first year of teaching at Anderson, I was pregnant with Abby. Now, 26 years later, while Teresa prepares for the school year as principal at Truman Elementary, her daughter Abby is getting ready for her first day as a teacher. I want to make a good impression. Not only is Abby following her mom's career choice, she's doing it at the same school, Anderson Elementary. I mean, out of all the schools, it's like, what are the chances that I end up at the same one? Um, but I think it's kind of cool, it's sweet, you know, to be following in her footsteps. The idea to teach, long simmering for Abby, was really cemented when she was working at a daycare. Once I actually got to teach a lesson for the first time at my daycare was when it hit me. I loved it. I felt like it was natural. And then I was like, oh, I guess I've got the teacher bug. Now on her first day on the job, she has to manage a classroom full of kindergartners. She's getting advice from mom. Stay positive. Believe in yourself. You know so much more than you think you know. Abby's also taking the kind of approach she'd ask of her students. Ask questions. If you're not sure, just ask. Both of them recognize the importance of making mistakes. My role as a parent, whether she's in her 20s or when she was a child, is just to support that, pick yourself back up, dust yourself off, what did you take away from it, and what are you going to do differently moving on? I mean, that's learning. Like the kindergartners in her class, each day for Abby is new and a step toward the future. I'm ready to be here and I'm excited that it's 
finally here. I've studied and practiced all year in student teaching, so now I can actually, you know, take a whack at it <laughs> for the first time. I'm excited. Inside Vancouver Public Schools, I'm Amanda Richter. Thanks, Amanda. Over at Minnehaha Elementary, today is also exciting for a different mother and daughter. Mom is a teacher librarian and her daughter a kindergartner on her first day. Before the first bell rings, Kelsey Andrzejewski, the teacher librarian at Minnehaha Elementary, sorts crayons for her students. She has a little helper, her daughter Audrey, who's just starting an important day. Um, I'm going to kindergarten the first day. It's also a big day for Kelsey. She is my first off to school, so yes. I'm having all the first day mom emotions at the moment. Audrey's been looking forward to finally going to school. She has been counting down the days, how many wake ups until kindergarten starts, haven't you? Yeah, because mom bought me books and there was like, there was books, home, a book until the night before kindergarten. Even though Kelsey is the teacher librarian, not Audrey's teacher, they'll get plenty of FaceTime. Well, I think I have a library class today, and my class is going to come to the library, and we're going to do an activity with my mom. Audrey says she'll remember to say Mrs. Andrew Jeske, not mom, but if she slips up... She's had kids call her mom before, so it's okay. <laughs> the clock is about to strike nine, so Audrey's mom and dad walk her down to class. Her teacher is Mrs. Greenwood. I think she's going to be really excited for me to be in her class. Mm -hmm. After a hug and a goodbye, Kelsey leaves Audrey with her classmates with just a little bit of emotion. And I know that she couldn't be in better hands with the people that she's going to be with here. So I feel really great about it because I know this is a great place. Audrey digs in on a project, the first of countless assignments to come, a smile on her face, ready to begin a lifetime of learning. Teachers and students are excited for today, of course, but so too are district leaders. School board members, top administrators, and more split up every year to tour schools on the first day. Collectively, they visit every building in the district. We caught up with this group at Vancouver School of Arts and Academics. School board member Michelle Giovanozzi, VEA President Lynn Mayorka, and Superintendent Steve Webb stopped off at five schools. We're here to join the students and see what the first day of school is like and, and all the excitement and uh, how the classes are going. And the excitement, the anticipation, the potential of the students in the year ahead, it's exciting to be a part of that. Other board members and administrators stopped off at the rest of the schools. One of the administrators making the rounds this morning was the school district's superintendent, Dr. Steve Webb, and he joins us now. Steve, thanks for coming in. Pleasure to be with you, Nick. So why do you and your fellow administrators like to get out on the first day and get into the classroom? You know, what's not to like? Uh, eager students, eager staff, and certainly eager parents. There is so much joy and hope at the beginning of the school year. Mm -hmm. Before you were superintendent, of course, you were a teacher. When you go into the classroom like this, does it make you miss being in the classroom every day? You know, I absolutely loved teaching. I absolutely loved coaching. There's not a fall that goes by that I don't wish I had a classroom or I was walking the sideline of a Friday night football game. Uh, it reminds me just how special and powerful educators are in transforming the lives of children. Every year we start the school year, uh, we all have goals. Uh, you, of course, set goals for the entire district. Could you kind of talk about what you're hoping for for uh, Vancouver Public Schools this year? We have three focused goal areas this year. Uh, the first is around equity. Fundamentally, it's about closing achievement and opportunity gaps, particularly in ELA and math achievement. The second goal area is about excellence, which really is continuing to focus on scaling our Design 2, Chapter 2 strategic plan, particularly as it relates to removing barriers to student learning through our community schools work. And the third goal area this year is really about innovation, continuing to scale our digital transformation we learn vision, scaling coding, and making and maker spaces in our schools. Mm -hmm. So those first two priorities, it seems like you're talking a lot about making sure that the experience of every kid at every school is the same regardless of you know what their family life is like 
in any other external circumstances? Yeah, fundamentally, we know that if a child is hungry, it impacts their ability to learn. If a child does not know where they are going to sleep tonight, it impacts their ability to learn. And our community schools work really is about the village, schools, family, and community interacting as partners to strengthen opportunities for kids to learn and grow. And really, this is about leveraging resources that remove barriers to student learning in our classrooms and schools. Okay. Well, speaking of families, you have students in Vancouver Public Schools. What is the first day of school like for you as a dad? Oh, it's a crazy busy morning, making lunches, getting kids' backpacks ready to go, getting them into the pickup truck and dropping them off uh, at school. Uh, but listen, uh, all children have three universal needs, uh, to feel safe and secure, to feel loved and a sense of belonging, and to feel competent and capable. And it's incumbent upon us to create the context and conditions in every single classroom, in every single school, where those needs are met routinely. You know, uh, parents don't give us their children, they don't give us their students, they give us their babies. I've witnessed enough boohoo kindergarten <laughs> drop-offs and sat through enough commencement exercises in my career to know that those tiers are the same on the front and back end. And uh, you know, we've got a moral obligation to treat that sacred trust with reverence. Mm -hmm. So we have to begin with that end in mind. Okay, sure. Uh, well, at the beginning of the year this year, we've talked a lot about hope, what people are hopeful for the school year. Uh, your whole welcome back message is sort of geared around that. I want to know what you yourself are hopeful for in this new school year. I'm hopeful that we're going to continue to create the context and conditions in every classroom, in every school, that cultivate wonder, curiosity, and the joy of learning for our students in Vancouver Public Schools. Great. Thanks for uh, taking the time to join us and uh, have a great school year. Yeah, thank you, Nick. On the topic of hope, the superintendent asked students and staff to share what they're hopeful for and got dozens and dozens of responses. We've compiled those into a cool welcome back video for the new school year. You can watch that on the district YouTube and Facebook pages. Make sure you check it out and thanks to all of the people who submitted their selfies. Time now for We Learn, where we examine how students and staff are using technology in the classroom. This summer, kids didn't let the fact they were out of school stop them from learning about science. Chad Young joins us now with more on summer science camps. Chad? Thanks, Nick. I'm here at McLaughlin Middle School, where earlier this summer there was an all-girls robotics camp. Now, the goal of the camp is more than just to keep girls learning when they're out of school. It's STEM. That's science, technology, engineering, and math. And the focus is to keep them going throughout their academic careers and into life. I love summer camp. For the past seven years, Cindy Hagen has spent part of her summer running an all-girls robotics camp at McLaughlin Middle School. We've been working on circuit boards, which L flashing LED lights and a memory game we've been doing. Now we're doing hydraulic arms. Girls like Brody are exploring science in an environment where mistakes are okay. It is, I think, a very safe and supportive space. Um, I think the fact that it is all girls maybe contributes to that. Sydney attended this very camp back in middle school and keeps returning as a volunteer. Inspired by a childhood full of science, she's off to college at Santa Clara University. I plan on double majoring in mechanical engineering and biochemical engineering and minoring in aerospace. Um, yeah, and I want to be an astronaut um, or maybe a doctor. It's kind of open-ended at the moment, but... The sense of unlimited possibilities that Sydney feels isn't always shared by women interested in science. Some people don't treat women or girls like people. They think they're of a lesser value and can't do things that men can do. The reality of that environment has led to a shortage of women in STEM fields. What the research points to also is that once girls reach middle school, they start to not take those STEM classes, although they show a high interest in STEM uh, when they're in elementary school. This camp and similar activities look to balance the STEM workforce. I hope that they continue to just follow that passion that they have and know that it is cool to be a girl in STEM classes. Also, having science role models like Cindy and Sydney 
is a big deal for Brody. There are a lot of inspiring women, and I want to be one of those someday. The camp will return next summer, but be sure to sign your daughters up as soon as you can because they had 12 kids on the waiting list this year. Over at King Elementary, another science camp packed them in this summer. The summer STEM camp focused on science and literacy and drew a big crowd of boys and girls. There wasn't a lot of sitting around looking at textbooks. Kids were on their feet and using their hands. We all know the importance of engaging students in hands-on activities. Students love these activities. The camp was open to grades two through five and was paid for by community donors, making it free to parents. Lunch was free too, thanks to Share House. It lasted a full five days. So there was lots of time for all kinds of experiments. If you want to see more stories about technology, check out our YouTube page. That's youtube.com slash vansdtv. Back to you, Nick. Time for re-schools, the latest on the bond measure voters passed back in February and the projects that are coming out of that. And joining us now to talk about it is Tara Cox. Tara, what's the latest? Thanks, Nick. As people might remember, voters in Vancouver approved a bond measure in February to build and replace schools and do improvements at every existing school. One of those projects this summer was at Skyview High School. A crew went behind the school building this summer to resurface the track. That meant scraping off the old track, cleaning the surface, and laying down layer after layer of rubber. The old track was more than 20 years old. The average lifespan for a track is 10 to 12 years, but the district's maintenance team was able to stretch it out longer at Skyview. We've got a pretty uh, elaborate uh, PM maintenance program that we do on our athletic fields, and so, I mean, without that, uh, you, know, you know, at least we know we're getting our, a big bang for our buck with this stuff, so. Twice a year, the maintenance team inspects and repairs small damage to the track to prevent it from becoming a major problem. This project was completed before the start of the football season. The team practices in the grass inside the track and watering had to be shut off during the project. If you want to get more information on the bond construction projects and the timeline, just head to the district's website. That's vansd.org slash reschools. We'll also keep you updated on this show and the district website. Nick, back to you. Time now for the big picture, our favorite image from social media this week, and it comes to us from Hauk Elementary School. Meet Luna, the, the, the school's new therapy dog. She is named after Luna Lovegood, a Harry Potter, Harry Potter character, and is there to provide comfort to students, especially those with special needs. Many children are calmed by dogs like Luna, who is specially trained to work with kids. And you can keep up with Luna and her adventures at HaukLovesLuna.com. The Hauk Foundation provided a grant to pay for Luna and all of her training. Hey now, let's see what's happening across Vancouver Public Schools. And this one's important if, if you are the parent of a elementary age student. Curriculum nights are coming up and those are a big deal to attend. Learn what your child will be learning this school year. The first is next week at Philida, but most of them will be on the week of September 11th. Check in with your child's school or on the calendar at the district's website to get the day and time and be sure you attend. And that is it for us. I hope your first day of school was as fun as ours, and let's make this a great school year. For Tara Cox, Amanda Richter, Chad Young, and our crew, I'm Nick Vole. Thanks for watching.